average total inspection. Um, let's first create the operating characteristics curve for the on an average how much do you really have to inspect in a sampling plan. To create operating characteristics curves we need to create a bunch of fake probabilities in the lot. So let's create from 0% to all the way up to let's say 15% like that. Now out of 100 we can simply multiply the probability by 100 to visualize this number a little bit in a better way uh, percent is easy to understand than the probability now sample size let's say I take a sample of 90 so I'm gonna basically just use that sample size cell so in case if I have to play with it I can do it just by changing one cell and then the mean value for the Poisson is the if I take sample of 90 and then the lot has this is the probability of lot defective so that's gonna be the mean of the Poisson we can use binomial as well check that video where I showed the Poisson is the exact same as binomial so let's do Poisson in this case. Poisson is easy to uh, work with. So I'm trying to look at the acceptance number two, meaning that out of this 90, sample of 90, if I get two or less defective, then I'll accept this lot. So I'm calculating the uh, probability of acceptance uh, value two. And then the mean value is NP0, comma, and I'm looking for cumulative because if I get zero defective, I accept the lot. If I get one defective, I accept the lot. If I get two defective, I accept the lot. So it's a cumulative situation. So I'm gonna copy all the way down to calculate the probability. Now the average total inspection, one of the assumptions made in this case is that if the lot by chance get rejected, then 100% um, of that rejected item get inspected. The idea behind that is if the lot get rejected, then we think that, well, it is rejected because it had too many defective products. Maybe rather than two, maybe we have got five defective in the lot, which is unexpected for this particular type of product because we have set the acceptance criteria two. If you set acceptance criteria two, typically it should be less than 1% defective. So that kind of product, having five defective in the lot, every 100 out of 90 uh, sample, which is a lot. So then something wrong with the product. So then anything get rejected it gets 100% inspected so to calculate the total number of inspected this is the formula so you have already taken 90 and then whatever get rejected so 1 minus probability of acceptance times the whatever product left and is that 5000 minus 90 so that will be the total inspected so let's set this formula here is equal to 90 i'm going to freeze that because i'll use again and again for all of this uh, cell down plus uh, one minus the probability of acceptance so this is the chance that something can get rejected and once it get rejected we say that the hundred uh, percent gets inspected so we take sample of 90 we have left 5000 minus 90 of them so this is the um, average number of inspectors. I have already plotted that here. Um, you can see that um, as the um, lot defective increases, so in the x-axis you have the percent of defective. As the percent of defective increases, the chance that um, then the total number of inspected get increases because um, as you can see the more defective means that there will be high chance of that lot get rejected so if the lot get rejected you're gonna be 100 percent inspecting them so more chance of the lot get rejected think about this 15 percent defective where you are using c criteria 2 so if you find two or more defective in a sample of 90 um, which is very very high if you have 
um, 15 defective in that lot so the chance of that get rejected is very high so this is the chance of acceptance so you may you have to almost inspect all the 5,000 of in that lot you know something went terribly wrong and so this is another interesting um, facts of acceptance sampling where you can actually see the benefits of using it you know if you have some problem in the beginning of the product you'll be spending more time in inspecting them so a lot of time one of the quality gurus said uh, produce product with zero defect policy so make sure um, nothing gets produced with defects so then you spend a whole lot of time in inspecting them so instead of spending time on inspecting the inspecting them you probably better off just trying to make them you know make them defect free in the first place